news for all of West Texas. News West 9 at 6 starts now. No motive for murder, but Big Spring police have a suspect. A husband sits in jail tonight accused of killing his wife. It happened at their home on Sycamore early this morning. Several hours later, 48 year old Tommy Gutierrez Jr. turned himself in. Victor Lopez has the latest from Big Spring. At this time, just an ongoing domestic problem. Big Spring police aren't saying much, but they have another homicide investigation on their hands. When officers arrived, they found a female subject been shot. Uh, she was transported to the hospital by ambulance where she died in the emergency room. Authorities say the Gutierrez were hanging out with some friends and family when things took a bad turn. They had been having a, a small get together with neighbors and family when the shooting occurred. Safe to say everyone at the scene, most everyone at the scene had been drinking. In an off-camera interview, family members of Patricia Gutierrez say the couple had been married for about three years but had been in a relationship for 16. They say Tommy had a history of alcohol and drug abuse, and Patricia had asked him to get help many times. It's the family's belief she may have been trying to leave him when, according to her son, Tommy shot her in the back without even a second thought. This is the second fatal shooting here in Big Spring in the last two weeks. One woman we spoke to said she's concerned for the safety of all of Big Spring's residents. It's not good for the kids that live here that are going to grow up here. It's not good for the people that are here that can't afford to move. And it's just not good for the town altogether. Big Spring police say while there is criminal activity in the neighborhood around Sycamore, it's not any better or worse than any other part of the city. We respond to pretty much every street in the town. I mean, it's, it's no higher crime rate area than anywhere else or, or other places. But yeah, we do, have, we do have calls on that street. Neighbors say something's got to give. When I first moved here, I really liked this town, but over the last few years, it's just going downhill, and nothing that happens in this town surprises me at all anymore. Reporting in Big Spring, Victor Lopez, News West 9. A man suspected of robbing a 7-Eleven in Big Spring at gunpoint is now behind bars. Police arrested 21-year-old Ricky White on Wednesday. We're told he flashed a handgun while robbing the convenience store on Watson Road back on May 28th. He was booked into the Howard County Jail. He's being held on a $55,000 bond. A man accused of a double murder in Pecos won't face any additional jail time for not registering as a sex offender. Randall Lee Stevens failed to register when he moved to Pecos. He pled guilty to that charge a couple of months ago. Today, a federal judge ruled that the time Stevens has already spent in jail was enough for the crime. His legal troubles, though, not over. Stevens is accused of gunning down and killing Richard and Alicia Cherry at DJ's Roundup last year. There's no word yet on when that murder trial will begin. A tip led Midland deputies to almost 150 pounds of pot. 31-year-old Michael David Gomez was caught on the interstate just after midnight on Saturday driving with that marijuana. We're told deputies received a tip that a large amount of pot would be coming through the area. He's charged with delivery of marijuana. Gomez is already out of jail, though, after posting a $50,000 bond. A Midland man admits to stealing around $89,000 in an eBay scheme. 34-year-old Timothy Wayne Finkel pled guilty to wire fraud. He was part of a plot to steal money from customers on eBay. Finkel admitted to placing items for sale, taking people's payments, then never delivering the goods. eBay and online payment site PayPal reimbursed more than 70 customers swindled by Finkel. Finkel will be sentenced in September. A lunchtime wreck lands one man in the hospital in Big Spring. It happened along Greg Street. There's no word yet on what caused the wreck, but as you're about to see, the truck he was driving took out a telephone pole. The driver went to the hospital, but we're not sure how seriously he was hurt. There were no reports of phone or power outages in the area. Buying a home is a huge step, but Midland College and the Affordable Housing Partners are teaming up to make that intimidating experience a little easier for folks around the basin. Diane Tuzon has the details all new at 6. Home foreclosure and for sale signs dot the lawns here in the Permian Basin. The real estate business calls it a buyer's market. That, that's what we call low income. But for first time home buyers, making that purchase can be pretty overwhelming. We have an, a large assortment of services available to people in this community who want to purchase a home in the way of down payment assistance, 
credit counseling, and we're helping them with the resources to remain homeowners. Midland College and Midland Affordable Housing Providers hope their new program will make the entire process easier for first-time buyers. We have the home buyer class that is teaching them how to purchase a home the smart way. Going through a proper mortgage company with a mortgage they can afford in a house they can afford. This program definitely helped. I mean, who doesn't like a, a, a lower house payment? So yes, it, it definitely helped. It's Sandra Torres' first time purchasing a home, and she says without the help of the Match Savings Program, she wouldn't have had an affordable mortgage for her new home. The program requires you to be able to save for at least six months to match uh, three to one, so three dollars for every dollar you match. So we ended up getting $4,000 in, in down payment assistance. So of course that brought our house payment down. Betsy Sennard says overall, people should take advantage of this buyer's market and make that dream home a reality. The IRS is giving a tax credit to first time home buyers in 2009. If they purchase a home on or before December 1st, they will get a 10% tax credit. Midland College says the income requirement to qualify for the match program in a one-person household is no more than $33,000. And for a two-person household, the cutoff is $30,000 a year. Crystal? The burn ban is back on in Ector County. Just a week after lifting it, county commissioners approved a 30-day ban today. There are some exceptions. You can still barbecue, burn trash in a barrel with a grate, and weld. West Odessa Volunteer Fire Chief Jimmy Ellis says the ban will not ruin your 4th of July fireworks plans. They are still allowed, but vendors will only be open from July 1st through July 4th. Some of the power is back on in parts of Jow, New Mexico this evening. Powerful storms pushed through yesterday afternoon, knocking down trees and leaving behind huge hail. Power lines were also down, leaving most of the town without any electricity. We talked to the police department today. They say Excel Energy has been working all day to restore power. Well, a big hailstorm moved through Fort Stockton earlier, but things are starting to quiet down. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Tom T. Fertelli. Yes, that's exactly right. As we are looking at Storm Tracker 9 Live Dopper 9000 here, give us the latest, showing you that thunderstorm activity east of Fort Stockton has died out quite a bit, but as we look to the west and southwest of Fort Stockton, down into the Davis Mountains, still dealing with a few scattered showers and embedded thunderstorm out there, so some brief heavy downpours not out of the question. Closer in across the central Permian Basin, are seeing a couple of thunderstorms, very elevated storms. I just stuck my head outside and looked at these. Again, the bases are up there around 9, 10,000 feet, so w way up there, not a lot of rain coming out of them, but we could see some lightning strikes, though, in and around. Oh, just to the north of Goldsmith there on 181 where they had a uh, fire last night by lightning. Does look like more thunderstorms a possibility into the evening, but overall though things should be very isolated across the central and northern Permian Basin. Regional view of the Doppler radar put this into motion for you, showing most of the uh, activity today has been right across central portions of Pecos County. In fact, let's look at some more of those viewer viewpoint pictures brought into our by our viewers there of golf ball size hail. Quite a bit of it coming to the ground across uh, the Fort Stockton area reports of up to baseball size hail, some windows being knocked out. And we appreciate all the viewers that called in reports and sent us these pictures this evening. Let's go back to the maps now and talk about another threat is a fire danger. Red flag warnings remain in effect for another couple of hours there across portions of southeast New Mexico. For Eddie and Lee County in two areas right around Guadalupe Mountains National Park, are seeing some gusty winds all the way up to 43 miles an hour in Fort Stockton where they have higher humidity levels, but the low humidity levels across southeast New Mexico and the heat is on 102 in Carlsbad, 105 in Pecos this afternoon. The upper 90s right across the central Permian Basin down about 72 on the overnight low. We'll keep an isolated thunderstorm around through the 10 o'clock hour. It looks like a little less in the way of thunderstorms, a little less heat too on the way. More on that in your Storm Tracker 9 day forecast through Father's Day weekend here in a few minutes. Thanks, Tom. Well, temperatures aren't the only thing climbing this summer. Gas prices are rising at a record pace right now. Some believe the national average could jump to $3 a gallon during vacation season. The price of crude oil has doubled in the last four months. And if it feels like gas prices are going up every day, that's because they are. Today was the 48th day in a row that fuel prices jumped. Analysts say the U.S. oil refineries are running about 7% below normal for this time of year, due mostly to a low demand for fuel. 
The refiners are working at reduced levels to try and maximize their profits during the summer driving season. Big bucks for Midland and Odessa law enforcement. Today they received their plaques from the 6th annual Bad Boy Blast. The blast is held every year by ConocoPhillips and Halliburton and benefits the sheriff's offices and police departments in Midland and Odessa. This year the event brought in more than $80,000, which means each department gets upwards of 20 grand. It's not as much as past years, but organizers say every little bit helps. In the economic downturn with the uh, great generosity of all the sponsorships, we were able to raise over $80,000 back to the police departments. The Bad Boy Blast is a clay shoot usually held in April. This year, more than 900 shooters came out to take part in that event. You'll soon decide just how much power the government has to seize land under eminent domain. Still ahead, we'll tell you about a bill the governor has signed that puts the decision in your hands. And a Dallas mom changes her story. She now says her daughter is dead, not kidnapped. The details next on Newswest 9 at 6. Governor Rick Perry has signed a bill that will let voters decide whether to place limits on the government taking over land using eminent domain. In a ceremony in front of the Alamo today, Perry said land ownership has been essential to Texans for a long time and that the proposed constitutional amendment provides stronger protection for property owners. If approved by voters, the state constitution would be amended to prohibit government officials from taking property and giving it to a private developer in order to boost the tax base. The mother of a missing nine-month-old girl in Dallas recants her story. The child's mother, 19-year-old Tamara Craig, now says the child is dead and her father dumped the body into the Louisville Lake. She initially told police the girl was taken by an intruder at her apartment. The mother and the child's father have been arrested for tampering with evidence but have not yet been charged in the baby's death. The body is still missing. A Houston woman lucky to be alive. Police say someone knocked on her door late last night at her apartment. When she answered, she was doused with gas and set on fire. The woman was rushed to the hospital with second and third degree burns on 70% of her body. Investigators say the attacker ran off after setting the woman on fire. Workers at Bell Helicopter in Hearst, Texas are walking the picket line. This is the first strike at Bell Helicopter in more than 20 years. This morning, 2,500 manufacturing workers walked off the job when the union turned down a three-year contract offer. The union was upset about plans to make workers pay for medical insurance and plans to eliminate the jobs of 44 union janitors. The last strike at Bell lasted three weeks. The company says it is determined to stay at the bargaining table until a deal can be reached. Looks like more hot temperatures are on the way this week. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Tom T. Fertiller. Yes, and with that comes some isolated thunderstorms. Storm Tracker 9 Live Dopper 9000 giving us the latest here showing thunderstorm activity developing once again across portions of extreme western Pecos County into the Davis Mountain areas. We do have a strong thunderstorm between Fort Davis and Camp Miter Peak there on State Highway 118. Also in across the Midland Odessa area are looking at a few strong thunderstorms just north of uh, Highway 158 there north of Goldsmith and North Cowden also moving off to the uh, northeast. Look at today's weather almanac. Another hot one out there as we saw temperatures top out at 99 degrees so far. More heat on the way and maybe one more day of isolated thunderstorms. We'll talk about it. Your exclusive Storm Tracker 9 day forecast is up next. Energy Report is brought to you by Advanced Quick Lube, your one-stop oil change. Try us once, you'll be a customer for life. When you see news happen, call the News West 9 news line at 567-9991. From the station that brings you more weather, more often, this is your Storm Tracker 9 forecast. 
Well, we are seeing uh, most of the thunderstorm activity well below severe limits now. Storm Tracker 9 Live Doppler 9000 has given us the latest here, showing you that we do have that thunderstorm activity continuing across the mountain area. Strongest storm is here east of uh, Fort Davis along State Highway 118. Also another one there south of Balmeray and Saragossa, but nothing looking severe. Also right across the central Permian Basin, we do have a uh, thunderstorm here just to the uh, north northeast of Goldsmith. Also pushing off to the uh, northeast there. Uh, nothing too, too heavy. Maybe a brief heavy downpour. And also seeing a little more activity trying to sneak in from northeastern portions of Mexico between Presidio, Terlingua, and La Hitas there east of Redford along Ranch Road 170. A few thunderstorms popping up. Now as we take a look at the uh, regional view of the Doppler radar, severe weather threat really is across eastern portions of the South Plains into the Texas Panhandle this afternoon as we're seeing uh, fire danger, a problem. Red flag warnings up for critical fire dangers. That goes until 7 o'clock tonight, Mountain Time. Outside on a live Skycam network, a scorcher out there once again, upper 90s for most areas of uh, the Permian Basin, triple digits over towards Midland Air Park this afternoon and out towards the airport. High for today, 99 occurring right now with a south wind, not too bad at 16. Take a look at what's going on temperature wise. The hot spot Pecos this afternoon up to 105. Plenty of uh, 95 pluses out there. Even triple digits Del Rio down towards San Antonio. Here's what's going on. We are seeing another big trough of low pressure across western portion of the United States. It's bringing some disturbances across and that's what's kicking off some of the thunderstorm activity as this dry line is setting up. It's getting some upper level support. Today we're a little capped though. Warm air up around oh, 18,000 feet, kind of putting a lid on the atmosphere. So we have seen some strong thunderstorms, but they're very isolated and it looks like the main severe weather threat is into an uncapped area here across eastern portions of the Texas Panhandle. Forecast map for tomorrow shows this dry line pushing back to the west a little bit more. So a little Gulf moisture out there will keep an isolated thunderstorm around. And just like today, one or two could be on the strong to severe side producing large hail and strong damaging winds. Future track cloud and rain loop shows everything winding down by midnight tonight. Thunderstorm wise, a few more starting to pop up along that dry line tomorrow. But as we uh, get ready for the middle part of the week, heading towards the middle part of the week, looking at most of the activity winding down and the heat staying around here for the next few days. And also looks like it's going to be a hot Father's Day. Future track forecast county by county, mild overnight tonight, hot one tomorrow with triple digits showing up across most areas of the northern and central Permian Basin, all the way up to 107 across portions of Winkler County and also across southeast of Mexico too. Things will be hot tomorrow. Might see enough daytime heating to brew up an isolated thunderstorm here and there and one or two may be strong, possibly severe into the afternoon hours like we saw today with the golf ball size hail in Fort Stockton in the mountain areas of West Texas. Thunderstorms should end by 10 o'clock tonight. A few more rumbling around with the heat tomorrow afternoon. Storm Tracker 9 day forecast. Things will uh, stay hot, dry out a little bit for the rest of the week. We'll throw in an isolated thunderstorm for the weekend and Sunday, which is the official start of summer and Father's Day. We're looking for mostly sunny skies and things will be hot, though, with temperatures staying into the 90s. We'll be right back with sports. Tonight's weather brought to you by Berg Motors in Midland. If you haven't shopped Berg, you might have missed your best deal. From the station covering all of West Texas, this is News West 9 Sports. After last night's 9-4 loss to Frisco, the Midland Rockhounds now share the Texas League South Division's top spot for the first time since April 17th. After five straight Hound losses combined with six consecutive San Antonio Mission wins, the two teams are in a tie for first place. Oddly enough, the Rockhounds slump all began with the loss of Tommy Everidge to the Sacramento Rivercats last week. Since his departure to AAA, Midland has averaged just three runs or less a game, hardly resembling the offensive team we know and love. The hitting may be down, but the pitching is slowly improving. The ERA department, uh, we've actually have come down on this losing streak uh, in the ERA, but uh, the object of the game is to uh, either score more runs than the other team or give up less runs than the other team. And, and the last five games, you know, we're 0-5 and we haven't got that done. 
Hopefully tonight we score more. So this is how the Texas League South Division looks like as of right now. Midland tied with San Antonio at the top with Corpus Christi back just four games. First pitch for tonight's game at City Bank Ballpark is set for 7 o'clock. And we're going to have the highlights tonight at 10. The College World Series has now reached the elimination rounds, and today's first game featured the traditionally tough Cal State Fullerton Titans and Virginia. To Omaha we go. Winner moves on, and the other team goes home. Titans not used to being in the loser's bracket, however. They are used to scoring runs in bunches. Dustin Garneau checks out a Hotel Omaha. Two-run shot. Fullerton takes a quick lead, but the kids from the ACC were not intimidated. A big second inning included this two-run single by Danny Holson, Virginia. They go up and would extend that lead when Phil Gosselin doubles in another run. This was never really close. Titans, they take an early exit. Cavs move on with the 7-4 victory. The Longhorns are coming off a dramatic 7-6 win over Southern Mississippi that ended with a bases loaded walk in the bottom of the ninth. Horns, they get a day off before they tangle with the Arizona State Sun Devils tomorrow at 6 p.m. Well, the Los Angeles Lakers won their 15th NBA championship last night, beating Orlando 99 to 86 in the NBA Finals. Plenty of reason to celebrate, but some fans went a little too far. Like most titles that are won in pro sports, occasionally you get scenes like this one in the streets of Los Angeles just hours after the game. Lakers fans celebrating the victory, but getting a little too rowdy, lighting fires, vandalizing cars and stores, and injuring officers. Rocks and bottles were thrown at the LA police. Injuring eight. 18 people were arrested for disturbing the peace, among other infractions. Well, oh, they don't call it the City of Angels for nothing. That's going to do it for sports. We'll be back after this. Tonight's sports is brought to you by RogersFord.com. Log in, come in, and drive away. Super easy for you. All at RogersFord.com. When you're away from your TV, get News West 9 updates on these cumulus stations. Thanks for watching News West 9 at 6. We'll see you at 10. Local, long distance, and high speed internet services provided by Grande Communications, your original bundled services provider.